We all enjoy a warm summer night in nature, the sound of chirping crickets and a cold breeze after a hot day. But nature isn't as vibrant and loud as before. For decades, there's a silent mass extinction happening in the shadows. Most people overlooked it, till now. Like you, people now realize that the bees are gone. There are no dirty windshields in summer anymore. There are no annoying wasps and bees when you sit outside for dinner. And the parks and forests aren't as loud as before. Let's try to solve the biggest murder case since the death of the dinosaurs. What is killing the insects? And what will happen to us when the trees and fields are falling silent? Welcome to Dark New World. Sometimes we fear them, sometimes we admire their beauty. Insects are one of the biggest evolutionary success stories on Earth. Insects are the most diverse group of organisms, meaning that the number of species of insects are higher than any other group. In the world, 900,000 different kinds of living insects are known. This representation approximates 80% of the world's species. The variation is so high that we can only estimate the number of living species. Most authorities agree that there are more insect species that have not been catalogued by science than there are insect species that have been previously named. Conservative estimates suggest that this figure is 2 million, but estimates extend to 30 million. Even though most of them are quite small, they probably have the largest biomass of the terrestrial animals. At any time, it is estimated that there are 10 quintillion individual insects alive. Recent figures indicate that there are more than 200 million insects for each human on the planet. For every pound of human biomass, you have 300 pounds of insects on the planet. But if the numbers are so high, why do we have a problem? Well, the numbers of insects are dropping dramatically. Several studies suggest that insects are facing a mass extinction. In fact, half of the species on Earth that face extinction are estimated to be insects. Over 40% of them are declining, and a third are endangered. The data suggests that the rate of decline is at least 2.5% per year. A quarter of insects could be wiped out within just a decade, although, with a few insect populations having been studied, exact figures are hard to come by. Specialist insects, while perhaps more sensitive to change, are not necessarily those most at risk. According to a study, all groups are on the decline, even common and generalist species, which are often thought of as being more resistant to such disturbances. Insects are the main drivers of many of our ecosystems on land and in freshwater. They are the basis of many major food webs, forming the primary food source for birds, amphibians, fish and reptiles. They're also some of the most important pollinators of crops and significant organisms that cycle nutrients throughout the planet's terrestrial ecosystems. Without insects, the environment would simply fall apart. Nature is a complex system. It's perfectly balanced and removing one part could be catastrophic for the whole ecosystem. The extinction of some insects would mean that some predators couldn't feed themselves anymore. As a consequence, the species would disappear too, and that would trigger a cascading effect that cannot be reversed. But this is more than a scary thought. It is already being seen where the decline in insect populations have been studied. In Germany, for example, the biomass of flying insects had fallen by 75%. In Puerto Rico, ground insects had declined by a scary 98%. A big problem is the lack of studies when it comes to specific insect groups. Not all insect groups have been studied equally. One order that is frequently overlooked is the Diptera, or flies. Diptera have often been ignored, simply because they are difficult to study. It seems to be very hard to identify the species from the larval stage, especially compared to other groups such as the moss and butterflies. The enormous biomass of flies supports a whole range of other animal groups especially the more traditionally charismatic birds and bats. This makes the fact that so little is officially known about the number and trend of flies all the more concerning. This is a huge oversight. The Diptera, which include everything from houseflies to hoverflies to midgets and mosquitoes, are hugely important largely down to their sheer number. Although they are also significant contributors to most ecological functions such as pollination. But why is this mass extinction happening now? Let's look at some clues in agriculture. Because when we started to settle down thousands of years ago, humans began to shape the planet and its biomes dramatically. Agriculture allowed humans to dramatically grow in numbers and form villages and later cities. As large industrialized cities grew, 
fewer and fewer people practice agriculture. Those who did often farmed on a much larger scale than previously and more intensively. In the United States, there is about a third less forested land than there was in 1630, and we cultivate much of the cleared land, especially the former prairies. Over much of Europe, farms were managed by single families and included much natural vegetation and habitat for wildlife. Fallow fields, coppices and hedgerows, wet meadows and unmanaged ditches, lightly grazed pasture lands can be rich in successional plant and insect diversity. The expansion of farms into large commercial enterprises, especially after World War II, was accompanied by a changed emphasis to monoculturing and the application of increasing inputs of fertilizers and pesticides. Collectively, these practices drastically reduced the refuge available for insects, herbaceous plants, vertebrate insectivores and other organisms, a direct consequence of increasing crop scale and productivity. Currently, about 11% of Earth's land area is devoted to crops, with about 30% more used for grazing. Most of the grazing takes place in areas that are still partly natural, almost all of it at stoking densities that are damaging or unsustainable. Over the entire agricultural area of the world, species are being lost rapidly and continuously. The situation doesn't look good with 2.1 billion additional people projected to be added to the global total over the next 30 years. And yet, many people are starving or lack one or more essential nutrients even now. Agriculture has changed greatly since World War II, when pesticides, fertilizers and tractors became available, allowing greatly increased industrialization of farming methods. Following the war, traditional family farms gave way to commercial operations. Today's farmlands are larger in scope than their predecessors, more apt to be monocultures and more reliant on fertilizer, insecticide and herbicide input. Greater emphasis is now placed on the elimination of weeds, filling ditches and cutting down hedgerows. Low-lying wet areas are tied to increase arable acreage. These sweeping reductions in habitat diversity and heterogeneity have left little room for wildlife in many modern-day farming operations. In all parts of the world, agricultural intensification seems to be a prime driver in insect population declines. Although climate change is also playing an increasingly important role in the process of extinction. As the situation develops, we should keep in mind the importance of biodiversity for successful agriculture in providing pollination services and many other ways as well. Grasslands and prairies worldwide have been converted into croplands and plantations. As a result of this extensive conversion, grassland habitats have become the most threatened biomes on the planet. The grasslands, open fields and vernal pools of the Central Valley of California have been converted into some of the most productive farmlands anywhere in the world. Parallels occur across Europe's grasslands, the product of centuries of unmechanized, low-intensity agriculture following their post-World War conversion to industrialized agriculture. Now, is there anything we can do about it? Since humans took over the planet, the world experienced one of the biggest mass extinctions in history. Most people don't know it, but for the last 10,000 years, there are more species dying out than after the event that caused the end of the dinosaurs. Humans are the hardest challenge the biosphere of this planet ever had to face. The sad part is that we don't even do it intentionally. Although weak and way too late, people come up with ideas to preserve nature. Because by now, it is obvious that we don't have much time left to save the planet. One idea to slow down the decline could be designing agriculture in such a way as to preserve as much as possible of the existing biodiversity. We can, for example, maintain natural or restored areas within or beside the fields. Regionally, we will need to consider whether intensive or less impactful agriculture will have the more damaging effects on biodiversity overall. This question has no simple answer, since we practice agriculture in so many different conditions all over the six habitable continents. In some areas, such as much of the Midwestern United States and part of China, Chile and Argentina, large-scale agriculture is highly productive and, in theory at least, leaves the greatest amount of uncultivated space for the maintenance of biodiversity. The degree to which we are willing to subsidize the emplacement of sustainable agricultural systems and then expedite the most efficient movement of agricultural products around the world will also play an important role in preserving biodiversity. Some areas, like Western Europe, get by because the nations are so rich they don't need to satisfy their own requirements for food. But ultimately, the food needs of our global community must be considered in an environmentally just manner. Beyond our efforts to preserve natural areas, to restore them, and to design ways to combine them with agriculture sustainably. 
we will need to deploy additional strategies to achieve the greatest amount of biodiversity conservation possible. Some kinds of organisms, notably plants, can be preserved in living collections as seeds or tissue culture collections. Zoos, botanical gardens and culture collections offer ways to avoid the extinction of selected kinds of organisms. None of these efforts will be successful for long, unless we agree on and adopt effective global approaches to climate change, which has the potential not only for driving large numbers of species to extinction, while at the same time threatening our agriculture in many regions. Sounds hopeful? Yeah, it's an idea. Political tensions, economic crises and overpopulation will certainly not allow any of this. You can expect a lot of sustainable agriculture in richer nations, as well as an adoption of sustainable lifestyle by the masses. The problem is that this is just a trend and not something people are serious about. On a personal note, I would not recommend to try to explain to some young Gen Zs how their reusable coffee cup will probably not save the world, while on the other hand, their fashion and phone that they rebuy every year is the main factor for the destruction of the planet. Humanity hasn't really understood the problem. Everything we do at the moment is nothing more than a marketing campaign for prestige by Western nations. But if you want to still do something, then just plant some wild flowers on your balcony or garden. Believe me, the bees will be thankful. If you want to see more collapse related content then please like and subscribe. Do you think we can actually save parts of the planet? Let me know it in the comments below or suggest a topic that you would like to see on this channel. My name is Dennis, thank you for watching and goodbye.